the big picture here is that the unconformities aren't very notable over here. Mm -mm. And if you mm -hmm. hadn't seen the angular unconformities in other places, you might just look at that mm -hmm. and say, this is a, this is just a, a pretty um, conformable section. This one's left. Okay. This one's <laughs> good. But if you look over here, okay. like this face here, okay. you've got, where's our white bed? Here's our, this is a, this is our white bed. Okay. And then this is that bottommost cliff here, which is probably the mossback member of the Chin Lei. This is basal base Chin Lei. Right here. This slope forming unit below it is your melancopy. This is fantastic. It is. <laughs> okay. And then these red beds down here. That's your cutler. Okay. And notice the cutler kinda kinda comes up like that. That one's dipping. These are dipping but less steeply. And then this comes chops off across the top. Okay. So this used to be horizontal and then had to dip relative to this one. But if you let's make this one flat. And that had to tilt for this one to, to be, be straight, flat, and then yeah. that had to tilt for this one to be flat. Okay, and and what's interesting is this, this the, the beds above and below that white layer don't look that different. No. Right. Mm -hmm. So this is an intraformational unconformity, and um, it was probably subsiding or tectonically active or structurally active during the deposition of that unit. All right, now let's look at that wind gate up there. What does the wind gate do? Dun, 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 dun. Right? Mm -hmm. And then it's all messy back here, and then there's some big fallen blocks of the wind gate down here. That's yeah. a broken up wind gate. Mm -hmm. And probably a little bit of, yeah, wind gate and Kayanta all broken up right in here. Right in the middle of where? All of that, that big mess. Yeah. Okay. Where did that come from? Let's... What the wind gate used to be here was go all the way across. Okay? And so what's happened here is that there was space made down here beneath these units that was salt. It dissolved. And there was some extension related to those that salt dissolution. And this... So there was space down here, so these things basically fell in, and what you get is this a, a different kind of trap door than the one we were talking about yesterday, where this just rolls down into this space, okay? Mm. And oftentimes, before they collapse, they're anticlinal. So sometimes they're either salt anticlines, and in this case, this is a salt grobin. They're really nice. Dang. They're more for like boulder hopping and like. All the way down to the bottom of that is probably nearly a mile. Way right down there. Jurassic sandstone. And as that sandstone got brought back up to the surface, joint patterns formed, one of which was a north south, very dominant fracture pattern. And there's little water droplets there. And these eventually, the water gets down in those joint cracks 
and weathers and kind of rots that sandstone. And so you get these cool little kind of slot canyons in between, and you get these fins, these north-south trending fins that we've seen in a couple of different places um, from afar. And then if you just take one of these, those fins and look, where's my cross bedding going? I don't have any cross bedding going there. What happens is that water also comes down through this porous sandstone, hits impermeable layers at major bounding surfaces or bedding planes, and flows laterally, sometimes laterally issuing, issuing out as spring, which is going to be our last stop today before dinner because we need to fill up our water jugs. And we're going to go see this, this very example. Okay, as that as this continues to rot out, it rots out kind of from the bottom up and starts to form one of these alcoves that often, you know, the Native American people like the Fremont used to occupy these alcoves, especially if they were uh, south facing because it would be warm in there. Okay, but then you make this alcove and then you've got a ceiling that is vulnerable to um, failure. Okay, so gravity takes it over and you get rubble falling from that and that can break through, ultimately leaving an arch. Ah. The east side of the fault, north, northeast, and the red is on the west side of the fault, west, southwest. The road that road basically is the fault. <laughs> There's a tiny bit of uh, the Pennsylvania strata on this side of the road. And as a matter of fact, see that little cut through there? It's like a little failed railroad cut or something right across the road. It's behind these trees mm -hmm. and it's kind of gray in there. There's excellent fossils there. If you ever come back and want to stop and look for fossils quick, there's some really good ones there. It's just kind of tight for a big group. Um, okay, so you guys have been telling me that this unit is the Entrada. That's the slick, the slick Rock member and the Dewey Bridge member. And then we've got that nice platform of Navajo coming down and diving underneath of us. Okay, so all of those things are relatively flat lying over here. And then they come over. There's some messy stuff here. And then it bends down right to there. Okay. And this, so this then would be what unit right here, if you do the stratigraphy from here over to here, what, what is the most of this unit we're looking at here? What's the main it's unit? Like, That's a slick rock, rock member of the Entrada, okay? But look at the very top. What unit is that? It's Morrison. 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 I guess it is. Yeah. It's Morrison, just like our stop up here because the line was too long here. Yeah, so well, like it's not over there. It's, no, you don't see it there. There's just a little bit of it at the very top, oh, okay. right, there. right there. As a matter of fact, I don't think that. I think that's Morrison up there. That white sandstone. Okay. So and that's curving down too, like we saw yesterday. So basically, you've got Morrison and Trotta. at the top over here that's curling down. And on this side, you've got Pennsylvania. Juxtaposed to one another. Okay. So what kind of a, what, what happened here? What kind of a fault is this? There's a fault, you gotta have a fault there. Right. Well, it's a normal fault. No. Well, if it's perfectly vertical, you don't know. <laughs> That's a good lesson, actually. What went up and what went down. If it's perfectly vertical, there is really no definitive hanging wall or foot wall. By definition, then you can't say whether it's a normal or a normal. Okay. But what we're going to go ahead and do is do this. Let's angle it. Okay. So if this is so, what side had to go down? Uh, right. The Pennsylvanians way the... down here on this side. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so this had to go down. Okay, so it's a normal fault, and we would say it's basically a north-south trending normal fault down to the east. North-south, so the fault runs this way. 
Well, I'm, I'm like blending it with its overall trend. It's an overall north-south north trending north structure, north and it's down to the east. Okay. That's how, it, that's Geospeak, okay? So in map view, it would look like this. That's north. There would be a, a little circle, a line with a ball on this side, and you'd have Entrada mapped on this side, basically. And then you'd have your um, Honaker Trail map this on this side. That's in plan view. So if we turn that like this, that's what that fault would look like, okay? So again, this is one of those salt structures. You had to make space, you had to remove something here to allow for these old, younger strata to curl down and fill that space. And that space used to be salt, okay? And remember that the salt, the Paradox Formation, is probably 500 feet below us or something like that. You'd have to look at the strat column and the thicknesses vary across the region. But the salt was removed and, uh, but we know it's, it's not far underneath us. And then this stuff came down, it's a trap door, boom, like that. So kind of interesting to think about, we were talking in our car, if these salt structures did all form about the same time, which is not necessarily the case, but that would be a good argument for upheaval to be a meteorite impact because none of these other salt problems, we've looked at two major salt problems now, the one up the canyon yesterday morning at the ranch, and then this one, the trap door, the top of the trap door, the top of the salt dome that's collapsed is still here. It hasn't eroded away. Why would that one have eroded away? Because that's just a thought. But salt moves around, it moves, it can move, it moves slowly, right? All these salt domes didn't happen overnight like a meteorite impact. They move slowly and they all don't have to happen at the same time, okay? But a lot of these unconformities in the Chin Li, the salt was already moving at that time. But then to incorporate the Entrada and the Morrison into a salt structure, how old would that faulting be? If it's faulting at least as young as the Morrison. Is that your ass? Jurassic, yeah. Yeah, they had, all these units had to be here before they could make this fault. <laughs> Right? So this salt structure has to be post-Morrison, at least. We don't know if the Cretaceous is involved in this folding. Kind of like we don't know if the Cretaceous was involved in the deformation over at Upheaval because it's not there. It's eroded away. So that would help us with it. Minimize, you know, getting a better constraint on age. Okay? Okay. We got some weird stuff happening around here. In the Mesozoic and maybe Cenozoic time, we don't know exactly when some of these things happen. But there's bodies of literature on the salt tectonics of this area, and there's bodies of lit there's a big body of literature on the upheaval, and they'd be just really wonderful research projects, maybe even a, um, a thesis project could be um, performed on either of these two problems. I don't think anybody really has a problem with the Moab fault. Perhaps <laughs> some of the kinematics, I don't know. <laughs> or the timing, for sure. We're always trying to think of ways, what haven't we thought of to try to better answer some of the questions we have. Like, we don't really know how old these structures are, as far as I know. And we don't really know how old a people is. So how do we figure that out? Is there something we haven't thought of yet? Or is there gonna be a technology 10 years from now, from now that we'll finally go, oh yeah, you know what? We could apply that. We might be able to update, up to, uh, to date upheaval with that. That's how science works. <laughs> All right? Be willing to change. True.